This is the world as we know it today, familiar shapes, coastlines, and borders that we've memorized since grade school. The globe may feel static, but imagine this. What if Earth's sea levels dropped by 1,000 meters, not rows, dropped? In this alternate Earth, entire underwater landscapes would reappear. The planet would look vastly different, so different, in fact, that many countries would double in size, islands would merge into continents, and forgotten lands would reemerge from the depths. Let's dive into this hypothetical and truly mind-bending world. A whole new underwater Earth emerges. If Earth's oceans lost 1,000 meters of water, an unimaginable amount of submerged land would suddenly be exposed. Deep continental shelves would rise above sea level, Underwater mountain ranges like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which snakes down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, would become massive above-ground mountain chains. Countless trenches, channels, and submerged plateaus, once home only to marine life, would now form dry land. Earth's surface area would increase by tens of millions of square kilometers. Some of these new lands would be barren and rugged, harsh deserts of salt and rock. Others might support life, becoming fertile plains with time. But one thing's for sure. Our modern map? Completely obsolete. Australia, New Zealand, and the Great Merge. Let's start with the land down under. Australia becomes a land titan. Its northern regions stretch across what was once the Timor and Arafra seas, physically merging with Indonesia. Papua New Guinea becomes part of this megamass, forming a massive Australasian supercontinent. Tasmania fuses seamlessly with the mainland, and to the east, New Zealand undergoes one of the most shocking transformations of all. The submerged continent of Zealandia, once hidden beneath the Pacific, now emerges in its full glory. New Zealand's north and south islands no longer stand alone. They're joined by vast stretches of reclaimed land. The New Zealandia is nearly as large as India. New Zealanders prepare to build highways across an entirely new continent. Southeast Asia turns into a giant peninsula. Moving into Southeast Asia, things get even wilder. The countless islands of the region, Sumatra, Java, Borneo, the Philippines, all become part of one massive landmass. The South China Sea becomes a vast, lowland plain. You could drive from Vietnam to Manila without ever needing a bridge. The entire region becomes one of the most densely populated and connected areas on the planet. Taiwan no longer floats offshore, it is now physically part of mainland China. In this new world, political disputes like China's claim over Taiwan turn from ideological to geographical reality, whether Taiwan likes it or not. And Japan? It stretches its fingers out to Russia, China, and the Koreas. The Sea of Japan becomes a dry valley. South Korea is now landlocked, bordered on all sides by Japan, North Korea, and China. South Asia rewrites its borders. India, already a massive country, swells even further as the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea recede. Sri Lanka becomes part of India once again, connected via land. Remember the ancient land bridge known as Adams Bridge? It's now exposed and reinforced, allowing people to walk or drive between the two countries. Bangladesh, often threatened by rising sea levels in the real world, gets a welcome reversal. It gains thousands of square kilometers of new land. The Maldives, previously a collection of low-lying atolls, are now sprawling tropical land masses, no longer in fear of disappearing beneath the sea. The Middle East and Africa fuse. Africa may appear largely unchanged, but look closer. Its eastern coastline bulges outward. The Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula are now one giant connected landmass. The Red Sea? Gone. In its place, a valley of salt and cracked earth stretches between Egypt and Yemen. Saudi Arabia's eastern coast expands dramatically, swallowing what used to be the Persian Gulf. As a result, countries like Qatar, Kuwait, and Bahrain are now far from the sea, fully landlocked. In North Africa, Egypt's coastline extends into the Mediterranean, while in the south, Madagascar joins the African mainland. Tiny island nations like Seychelles, Comoros, and Mauritius explode in size, now resembling small mainland nations rather than dots on the map. Europe loses its seas. What if Europe lost its seas? Suddenly, the continent looks nothing like we remember. First off, the United Kingdom is no longer an island. The English Channel? Gone. In its place, the ancient land of Doggerland re-emerges, a lush, sprawling plain that once connected Britain to Europe during the last Ice Age. London and Paris? Now just cities on the same landmass. Ireland and Britain fuse together, forming a single island nation that's now directly tethered to France and Belgium. The North Sea? Completely drained. The Netherlands, Denmark, and northern Germany gain hundreds of kilometers of new territory, pushing their borders into what was once open sea. Further north, the Baltic Sea disappears. Sweden, Finland, and the Baltic states all merge into a single, unbroken landform. Scandinavia is no longer remote. It's stitched directly into Europe and even connects to Russia on foot. 
But here's where it gets surreal. A massive land corridor now stretches from Scotland to Iceland. From there, newly exposed seafloor links it to Greenland. And yes, Greenland connects to Canada, which means, in theory, you could walk from Portugal all the way to North America. No flights, no ships, just boots, backpacks, and a very long hike. The Mediterranean? Shrunken. Italy gains a vast extension of land. Greece is no longer a sea of islands, like it's a mountainous peninsula. The Adriatic vanishes, giving Croatia and Albania enormous new coasts. Europe, once fragmented by water, is now a mega-continent, more unified, yet geopolitically more complex than ever before. This isn't just a new map, it's a new world. The Americas bulk up. Imagine waking up one day, and the oceans have dropped by 500 meters. North America? Still there, but barely recognizable. The U.S. East Coast stretches hundreds of kilometers farther out. Boston and New York now sit dozens of miles inland. A vast plain, once under the Atlantic, links the mainland directly to Bermuda. Florida? It's no longer a peninsula. Eh, it's a land bridge connecting to Cuba and the Bahamas, creating one continuous mega landmass. Expect major shifts in trade, tourism, and yes, some tense new border negotiations. In the south, the Gulf of Mexico becomes a shallow bowl of fertile ground. Louisiana and Texas suddenly own massive new beachfronts, while Mexico gains a sweeping corridor of land rich in oil and gas deposits. But the real shock? Hudson Bay vanishes. In its place, Canada inherits a massive crater-like basin, thick with sediment, rare earths, and untapped resources. The new Canadian landmass rivals the size of the entire Amazon rainforest. Geopolitics changed forever. South America doesn't stay quiet either. Argentina's coastline balloons outward. The Andes no longer stop at the edge of the continent. They now loom above newly exposed seabeds, extending the land far into the Atlantic. The Falkland Islands? They're now part of the mainland. No boats, no disputes, just dry land. Meanwhile, the Amazon River system transforms into a network of deep valleys and trenches. Brazil's coastline pushes hundreds of kilometers out, revealing ancient, untouched terrain. With it, a treasure trove of biodiversity that hasn't seen the light of day in millions of years. It's a new world, not underwater, but risen from the deep. A new global reality. What if the oceans dropped by a full 1,000 meters? The world wouldn't just change, it would be reborn. Entire coastlines would explode outward. Nations would suddenly gain thousands of square kilometers of new territory. Places like the Maldives and the Netherlands, once threatened by rising seas, would now dominate vast new landscapes. But with old seaports stranded far inland, global trade collapses overnight. Shanghai, New York, and Rotterdam? No longer coastal. New megacities would rise along the new shorelines, while inland towns scramble to redefine their purpose. Geopolitics? Turned upside down. New borders would need to be drawn. Strategic waterways like the Suez, Panama, and Bosporus become deep inland valleys. Their roles in global commerce? Gone. But it's not all progress. Marine ecosystems would face mass extinction. Coral reefs left high and dry. Entire fish species lost with the shrinking seas. Meanwhile, weather patterns would shift chaotically. Fewer oceans mean less evaporation, less rain. Formerly lush coastal farmland could dry up, cracking into salty wastelands. And then there's the human toll. Coastal populations, billions strong, would be forced to migrate as water sources move or vanish. Infrastructure built over centuries would be rendered useless. But here's the thing. Humanity adapts. We've survived ice ages, volcanoes, and plagues. In this new world, we'd carve roads through ancient seafloors, build cities where oceans once ruled, and plant crops on land untouched for millions of years. The planet would never look the same again. But then, neither would we. So, if sea levels ever drop by 1,000 meters, this is what our planet might look like. Strange, fascinating, and profoundly different. Which region surprised you the most? Was it the return of Doggerland? The rise of Zealandia? Or the land bridge connecting Europe to North America? Let us know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe,